Hi, I'm David Ireland, the Wildlife Man. Welcome to another Wildlife Man podcast. Now, today's episode is number seven, and it's titled Lion Kill. Now, the Wildlife Man podcasts are available on all the major podcast networks, including Apple Podcast and also Spotify, but also on my own YouTube channel and Facebook. Now let's talk about one of my most favorite predators on the whole planet, and that has to be lions. I've had a lot of time with lions in Africa and really enjoyed filming them and being with them. But let's talk about their senses. Now lions have an amazing sense of smell. They have a Jacobson organ in the roof of their mouth. So what happens is, it looks like they're smiling, but they're actually rolling their gums back, their mouth wide open, showing their teeth, and they're letting the air flow over that organ in the roof of the mouth. It allows them to taste smells in the air. And most importantly, to identify what that animal or what that smell is, and also the direction where it's coming from so they can locate it. Now lions also have excellent hearing. They can rotate their ears in different directions. It allows them to know where the sound is coming from. And their hearing is so acute. They can even hear the sound of grasshoppers hopping off the grass as wildebeest move through it. And they can hear that from hundreds of meters away. Their sense of hearing is insanely good. Now lions nighttime vision is also amazing. It's not twice as good as their own. It's not three or four or five times better than their own. It's actually eight to 10 times better. So their nocturnal hunting is made so much easier with their amazing nocturnal vision. Now let's look at lions' weapons. What they have to be able to take down big prey like buffalo. The lion's jaws can open up to amazing 28 centimetres. Lions have one of the largest bites in the animal kingdom. Now lion's teeth are also perfectly designed for taking down animals. Those incisor teeth at the front of the jaw are perfect for gripping and tearing. But those huge canines, which can grow up to seven centimeters, are designed for separating the spine, for breaking the back and breaking the neck, or gripping the throat, crushing the trachea, but also damaging major arteries that supply blood to the brain. Or sometimes when the lion will grab the muzzle of an animal and literally suffocate it. Now lion's claws are retractable. That allows them to stay sharp when they're running over rough ground, but to be able to use them when they need to. On the front paws, they have five toes. The fifth toe is called a dew claw. And it acts a little bit like our thumb. It is an opposing claw so they can hold. So they can hold an animal down when they're killing it or hold an animal tight when they're tearing flesh off it. So their claws are perfectly designed for capturing, killing and holding. Now a lion's tongue is actually coated in very, very sharp, tiny spines all face backwards. So when the lion licks a carcass, it can literally scrape flesh away from the bone. So when you see them licking bones of an animal they've killed, they are actually feeding. Now lions achieve gaining their prey with short, very, very fast charges. They then may pounce and actually land on the back of the animal 
or they may even trip or knock it over. Now, I've had some amazing encounters with lions. Years ago, I was walking on the banks of the Limpopo River in Botswana, and I had a Kalahari Bushman tracker, and he was partly educated, but he didn't speak English that well and didn't always understand what I was saying, but he was very clever at tracking. And we were tracking a giraffe, and we could see the prints very clearly in the muddy sand on the banks of the Limpopo, this magnificent river. But then we could see that some skirmish had happened and there was some blood on the ground. But you could see where the giraffe had walked away. But what confused us was the tracks that were left. It was like drag marks and you could see the prints of a lion, but only two. When they drag something, they'll drag it between their legs. Especially leopards do that. But not so much lions. They normally feed where the kill happened, where it was achieved. But what we were seeing was two prints of a lion and this wide, heavy drag mark, which was confusing. And I didn't want to go too much further so I went back to the old Jeep. We had a, a clapped out old Jeep, no doors on it, whatever, but we did have an old rifle and an old 30-30 rifle. So I took that just in case. And we started following those drag marks. And eventually we, we saw what had made them. And it was one of the saddest things I've ever seen. What had happened is a lion had attacked a giraffe. But giraffes are very clever at kicking. They can do a forward front kick with their front hooves. They can also do a lethal back kick. And what had happened is that giraffe had defended itself and kicked that lion and paralysed it. The lion was paralysed from the chest down. The drag marks were actually the lower half of the lion's body, its, its back legs being dragged through the sand. That lion could only move with its front legs. And when we came onto that lion, it just turned towards us and it's trying to get away, dragging itself and growling, obviously in a lot of pain. It was a horrible thing to see. I never thought I would ever shoot a lion. I would hate to shoot native animals anywhere. I've only ever hunted feral animals. But we had to put that lion down. And that was a very, very sad day for me to see that. But I can understand. You can't blame the, the giraffe for wanting to survive and defend itself. We did some more filming on that Limpopo River on the banks of that amazing river in Botswana. We went out at night, the same Bushman tracker that I had before, in the funny old Jeep, no doors. I had a tripod in the, the back of the Jeep with Bolex movie cameras, 16mm movie cameras. We had spotlights and we'd follow a pride of lions. And we'd follow them usually around sunset during the night because that's when they hunt. And we'd done it for three or four nights without getting a kill, without filming a result. There was one big female. She had two, three sisters, about the same size, fully grown. They were the ones that hunted. There was a few cubs about one year old and one huge male at the back. And they're just tracking through the grass. Amazing to be with them because I could reach out and touch them on the head. I'm that close. The big male is, is walking beside me. It's quite frightening. But they're just charging along through the grass looking for prey. Using all those amazing senses, senses of hearing and smell and sight, everything. And we came on to a lone bull, a lone wildebeest. Perfect for this lion pride. And straight away, 
She stopped. The matriot, the boss. She stopped. The ears go down and she froze like that in the grass. And they all do the same. They pick up the body language. They know exactly what's happening. And then she slowly moves in. The big old male, he sits down. He's not interested. He'll wait and let the girls do the hard work. The cubs stay there. And she starts moving through the grass. The only thing you could see was the black tip of her tail. Perfect, because she's telling everybody where she is, just with the tip of that tail. That works really well for cubs, of course, when in the long grass. The cubs can see the tail. Her sisters go out each side like this. They call it the horns of the bull, and they stop. That wildebeest is trapped. It doesn't matter which way it runs, they're going to get it. That wildebeest was totally unaware what was happening. We shut down the the spotlights, not to give the lions an advantage or to give the wildebeest a disadvantage. But we had a full moon. There was plenty of light. And of course, with the eyesight of the lions, they could see perfectly. And I could see what was going on as well in that, that moonlight. And we're filming. And the big male stopped right beside me. And it was a cold night. It's winter. I had a blanket wrapped around me. The wind was blowing and that blanket was sort of flapping a bit, making a bit of a noise. And that big old lion, instead of looking and watching the girls, for some reason he turned and he's looking at me. And I could feel his warm breath on my neck. He is literally here. You have to be there to understand how big these animals can grow. 270-something kilograms or more. Big animals. And to be that close to a big male lion is quite terrifying. And I just sat there really quiet. I didn't move. I don't know why. It might have been the flapping blanket. I don't know. But for some reason, he just hit me on the leg with his paw. But the, the claws were retracted. I don't know why he did that. I thought that was the end of my life. But just then, that female launched her attack and she rushed forward. And her sisters rushed in from each side. And they just pounced on that, that wildebeest. And they brought it down. And the big male moved forward as well. So my episode with him was over. And I said to my bushman tracker, my driver, I said, wait, 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 and I crawled over the front seat, crawled over the bonnet and onto the bull bar of that old jeep. And I've got my elbows like that. I'm lying on the bonnet of the car, my elbows, I'm hanging off the front of the car. And I turned to him and I said, get me close. Big mistake. He basically put the bull bar almost on top of the, the animal that was being killed. I am here filming the lions are killing the wildebeest in a few feet in front of me. The matriot, the main lioness, has got that wildebeest by the muzzle and she's suffocating it. And all I can do is film. I didn't dare make a noise. I sort of whispered back a little bit to the driver, can you move back a bit? He didn't understand or couldn't hear me from all the growling and going on. So I just kept filming like this. <laughs> he did turn the spotlight on, which gave me plenty of light for filming. And there's all this action going on. And one of the lionesses looks up at me and she's obviously thinking that I'm a threat to their food, their dinner. And she's pulling faces at me, growling. And I'm just going, whoa. One swipe with that paw, she would have taken me off the bull bar. But it never happened. And eventually my driver pulled the car back.
And the footage that I achieved that night went worldwide on the World Encyclopedia in their CD-ROMs. Some of the best footage I've ever shot. I've always had a fascination for, for lions and I'll be going back and doing more with them. But I won't ever forget that night filming that wildebeest suffocating under that big moon and lying on the, the front of that old jeep. Eight years ago, I filmed a lioness suffocating a wildebeest. She had a mouth completely over the muzzle of the stricken animal. I filmed the wildebeest desperately trying to suck air past her jowls and break free from her deadly embrace. I was on the truck's bonnet, only three feet from the action. One lioness showed its displeasure at my closeness, while the other members of the pride ignored me completely. I hope you enjoyed my lion story. Now, every week we will publish a new Wildlife Man podcast. I've spent most of my life working with a huge diversity of animals from the animal kingdom. So if you enjoy, please subscribe. Please share, like, and ring that notification button so you never miss a new story being published. And remember, all my films are available streaming on demand from Vimeo. So that's it from me till next week. I am your wildlife man.